Hi guys, I hope that you are doing well. This IXL assignment right here, 012 Exterior Angle Theorem is the final IXL assignment in our Unit 2, all about basic geometry shapes. All right, this IXL assignment, based on its name, obviously, focuses on the theorem, so kind of like the rule, that we know about the exterior angle of triangles. So let's very quickly review what that rule is, and then we can hop on into practice. So our exterior angle theorem, so that rule, tells us that the exterior angle of a triangle, so this right here, in this case angle D, notice that it's on the outside, it's on the exterior of a triangle is equal to the sum. What does sum mean again? Sum is the answer to an addition problem of two opposite interior angles. So right here we have angle D. These two angles are opposite, so they're across from it. And notice that they're both on the interior, so they're on the inside of the triangle. So that means this exterior angle D is equal to the sum of, so the addition of, my two inside angles, A plus B. All right. Now, even though this is great, I am someone that learns best by seeing examples and getting a little bit more specifics. So let's take this rule that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the interior angles and try it out on this IXL assignment. All right, here we go. Now, first thing I want to mention about this IXL assignment is that in, and I wish IXL didn't do this, I'll be honest, but they do. Notice that it's labeling it as the measure of angle one. And if we look right here, we have a one. That is the angle it's referring to. There is no degree symbol. So there, it's not that it's one degree, it's that it's angle number one. So once you get the habit, you'll see that IXL does this throughout the entire assignment, so you kind of get the hang of it. But I know for me, that kind of threw me off at first. And I wish they would have used a variable instead, but that's okay, all right? So we just learned that the exterior angle, which in this case is this one right here, because notice that it's on the exterior, it's outside of my triangle, that angle, is equal to the sum. So remember, sum means addition, the answer to an addition problem, of my two interior angles that are across from it. So in this case, 31 and 78. All right, that means to find my missing exterior angle, I just need to add these two numbers together. So what would be 31 plus 78? Thirty-one plus seventy-eight is a hundred and nine. And hopefully I gave you enough time to answer that. Let's make that more like an equal sign. There we go. And that's our answer. That's it. Right, let's make sure we're correct. And we are, awesome. All right, let's try this one. So same rule, my exterior angle. So notice that one is on the exterior, it's on the outside of my triangle, is equal to the sum, so addition, of my two interior angles. So in this case, 62 and 41. All right, so once again, we just need to add. What is 62 plus 41? 103. So our missing exterior angle, number one, is equal to 103 degrees. Bravo. Very good. All right, um, let's see if we can get a different type of problem. But I think if I jump, it's not gonna give us that. All right, so let's just answer another one of these real quick and see if then we can get another sample. But hey, the more examples, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, the first thing we need to 
ask ourselves, and I'm going to phrase this one differently, is what are we given? Are we, what are we given and what are we trying to find? In this case, we are trying to find an exterior angle and we are given the two interior angles. So what does that mean we need to do? We need to add them up because those two will equal the exterior. So 90 plus 35 is 125 degrees. Wait, why am I writing 120? 125 degrees. See if this will be, hmm, we need another type here, my goodness. All right, here we go. This was the other type of problem I was hunting for. All right, so it's, we're gonna use the same theorem, but am I being asked to find the exterior angle this time? Yeah, no, they've given me the exterior angle. I know that the exterior angle is 139 degrees, but I am being asked to find one of the interior angles. All right, let's write that out as the equation so we can better see what we need to do. So my exterior angle, which in this case, I know that value, so 139 degrees, is equal to the sum of my two interior angles. So 69 degrees plus my missing angle measurement. What does that mean I need to do to find my missing interior angle? Hopefully you said subtract. All right, we're gonna subtract 69. So what is 139 minus 69? 70. So 70 is our missing interior angle. And if you were ever unsure and wanted to double check, how could you verify that you found the correct answer? You could basically substitute it, plug it back in. So say, all right, I know that 70 and 69 have to equal my exterior angle. So is 70 plus 69 139? It is. So that means we didn't make a goof and accidentally subtract wrong. All right. So when you're working on this assignment, those two types of problems, so the first three that we did, and like this one where you're trying to find the exterior, or like the one we just did where you're given the exterior and therefore you have to subtract to find the interior, are what you're going to get all the way up into about the SMART score of a 70 range. Once you get past 70s, you will get into more of a challenging problem. So that, of course, is where it's up to you on whether you want to keep your SMART score of a 70, which is a B in the gradebook, still a great grade, or whether you want to challenge yourself to try to get that SMART score of an 80 or a 90. So let's finish this video by doing one of those problems. All right, so yeah, so right here, right about when it gets to 75 is when you hit that challenge zone. All right, this time, instead of knowing my angle measurements, all of my angle measurements are an expression. But the rule still applies. That theorem, the exterior angle theorem, still applies. And that exterior angle theorem tells us that our exterior angle, so our exterior angle is Z plus 45, is equal to the sum of my two interior angles. So Z and then Z minus 50. Oops. All right. Now we have an equation that we need to solve. So equations were something we did before Christmas break and equations are never gonna go away. They are always gonna be part of math. Like this, for example, you learn something new, but then you have that challenging problem where we take equations that you've already learned and kind of slide it on in to this new concept. 
When we solve equations, remember the first thing you always need to check for is any simplifying. So that either comes into play for the distributive property or in this case, combining like terms. So let's combine our like terms. I notice that we have like terms of Z's. And when you're doing like terms, you're only on one side or another of the equation. So what would be Z plus Z? 2Z. Remember, mathematicians are lazy, and we have those invisible ones in front of your Z. There are no other like terms, so everything else about the equation stays the same, which means I'm just going to bring it on down. All right, after your like terms are combined, the second thing is if you notice, as we have in this case, that there is a variable on both sides of the equation, you want to get those together. So we need our z and our 2z to be on the same side of the equation. I hope, hopefully you recall that when you move something to the other side of the equation, you have to do the inverse, so the opposite operation. This z right here, nothing's in front of it, which means it's a positive number. What is the inverse? What is the opposite of a positive? A negative. So we can subtract z from both sides of the equation because when you're moving something, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So z minus z is 0z, which eliminates. We're left with a 45. 2z minus z would just be 1z. And then bring down your negative 50. All right, we're almost done because when you solve equations, you're trying to get that variable isolated. You're trying to find the value of the variable. So in this case, z. z is almost by itself. What do we need to do? Yeah, we got to get rid of that minus 50. Whenever you move something to the other side, the inverse operation is performed. So if we're subtracting 50, the inverse of that would be adding 50. Add 50 to both sides. 45 plus 50, 95. And that's equal to Z because negative 50 plus 50 eliminates. So we answered our question. We found the value of Z it is 95. But let's just make sure. There we go. And most likely you'll have to answer about two of those to get yourself up into the 80 smart score. All right. If you're trying to shoot for that 100%. All right, guys, I hope this has helped clear things up. But remember, if it didn't, one, you can always go back and rewatch the whole group lesson, which was on Wednesday, February 17th. You can also check out the notes I uploaded. And of course, I have my weekly help sessions that you can come to if you want that um, back and forth interaction and help from your peers as well. All right. So let me know if you guys need anything, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.